Well, Secretary, what's the point of the trip to the Pacific Northwest? Vaccines, vaccines, vaccines. And to let people know that President Biden isn't done, the American Rescue Plan was a great start. Getting 200 million shots in arms was a great start. But you now start day 101 and you keep building. And so the American Rescue Plan is doing a great service in getting us out of the grip of COVID. But we got to have the American Jobs Plan. And now yesterday's announcement with the American Families Plan, which really invests principally in our kids to get them ready. You've got a problem, though. You're here at CMAR, uh, the UW Center for Latino Health says that, there is, that the vaccination levels for Latinos, particularly in Washington state, is way below the national average. We have 13.5% of the state is Latino. The vaccination rates, fully vaccinated uh, Latinos in the United States is 8%. So we are below the national average here. Yeah. Secretary, you have a problem. How are you going to fix it? Well, we're going to send the message out that we want to reach you where you are and that you get these vaccinations free of charge and that we're going to make it possible for you to get vaccinated wherever you are, wherever you live, whatever time you've got available, we're going to find you. Let us know how we can help. How do you uh, fix the trust, though? You know what? You talked with people like Dr. Julian uh, Perez, uh, the physician here at CMAR, who is reaching out every day. You use trusted advisors, people whose message will be listened to, and you, you hope that people will then give you a chance because we want them to get vaccinated. We know, we know a lot of folks, especially in the Latino community, work long hours, many days, have access to uh, or have a difficult time accessing a lot of services. And so we want to let them know, just tell us where you are and when you're available, we'll find you, we'll get there and we'll help you out. And don't worry, it's not going to cost you anything. This is, this is something we want to do because getting you vaccinated is good for all of us. Was there a lack of trust that goes decades back? I mean, obviously there are issues on the southern border versus what we experience here. It's a different dynamic, but are, is there a lack of trust here that goes back decades that leads us into this situation in your mind? You know, Chris, I think it's not so much a lack of trust. It's a lack of access. You've got communities that have forever been hidden away in a corner where services, government services and private sector programs haven't reached them because they're not the most lucrative places to go. And so they've been out of sight and out of mind. All of a sudden we're trying to reach them and they're accustomed to being in a hidden corner, especially if they happen to be undocumented, they figure, oh, I can't come out. I can't get that service. I'll get, if I go out there to try to get the service, I'll get booted. And so it, it, it makes it tough. But again, we want people to know COVID did not discriminate. It's going to come get you, whether you're rich or poor, white, brown, black, it makes no difference. And so we got, we got you, we've got your back because we want you to know if we don't, it's going to hit us. Yeah. 30% of the, the positive cases in King County, Latino, uh, is this an issue that, you know, you were at Lumen Field, there's, there's swimming in vaccine there. There's, yeah. there's multiple doses, thousands of doses that are available right now in King County. Is it a matter of Lumen Field has it, but CMAR doesn't? Actually, CMAR has, what I'm understanding is CMAR has done a, a boatload of vaccinations. And when their, when their clientele comes in, they give, they give them a vaccine if it's possible. So it's, it's not that. I think it's oftentimes, I hear that Yakima County had a problem because it's kind of far away. You got a lot of farm workers there. It's again, the access and it's some, to some degree, the trust that they can come forward. We just have to reach them. And because the, the quicker we reach them, the safer we're all gonna be. We gotta stay ahead of these variants that are changing the dynamic on this COVID-19 uh, because if, it's, if it starts to mutate into something different, you never know if those vaccines that we created to address COVID-19 will work as effectively. So even if you're vaccinated, you just wanna make sure you're safe. And so the quicker we get people vaccinated, the safer we'll all be and the more likely we'll keep those variants of COVID-19 at bay. I noticed you made a point outside to wear your mask too, despite what the CDC has recommended this yes, week. Yes. Do you believe that people should still wear a mask outside? You know, it's, it's important to try to do everything we can to be safe. Uh, and I, I think I'm sending a message. Uh, I, I want us to be safe. I want to go back to the days where I don't have this, but I want to be safe. And I want people to know I'm going to do everything I can on my end to make sure we're safe.
you just mentioned the, the plan that the president rolled out last night. This is on top of infrastructure plans and relief plans, $6 trillion worth of plans that, that he has been floating in his first 100 days. Can the country really afford it? Well, let's put it this way. The American Rescue Plan, which was over a trillion dollars, has helped us create more jobs in the president's first 100 days than any previous president in our lifetime could say were created. Those jobs are creating revenue for the government. But more importantly, those jobs are creating dignity in the families where those people are working. Nothing takes the place of knowing you've got a job in the morning, you're going to get up, go to work, and you're going to provide for your family. We got to do that. Because if you're not working, guess what? I don't care what kind of plans you have. You're not going to take care of American people and the American jobs. You're, you're out of luck. And so these investments, because that's what they are, are creating more economic growth. We're going to have higher economic growth in this year than we've seen in decades. And that's because we're making investments. Now, you can spend money and you can spend it the wrong ways. You can spend it on really wealthy folks or on mega corporations that hardly pay any taxes, and you're probably not going to get that much bang. But if you spend that money to help Americans get back to work, it's like what we did in the 1940s and 50s. We created the biggest middle class. Why? Because our federal government after World War II decided to invest in those GIs coming home. And what happened? We created the largest middle class ever seen in the history of the world. That's what we got to do. Joe Biden's thinking big. My last question for you is, an issue that you're well aware of in your home state of California, we have a, a huge issue with it here in Washington State, and that is homelessness. It yeah. is a crisis on the West Coast. The, the federal government in the last several years has not really helped. You hear it from elected leaders here in, in solving this crisis. You are part of the new administration in the first 100 days with all these plans and the trillions of dollars. What kind of money can this state, this region, expect from the federal government to cure the homelessness crisis? So we're going to be partners in helping address this because it really is a local uh, uh, an issue that challenges there for our mayors, for our county executives, and for our governors. But we're going to be in there with, with folks. We're going to be shoulder to shoulder with them. We're going to bring some resources. We're going to bring some ideas. But what we want to do is make sure that people know we're there to tackle this problem because no American should be without a home, especially our veterans. We have a whole bunch of veterans who are homeless. It makes no sense. Uh, to have someone who fought for this country now not be able to come home and have a home. But I haven't heard anything about an earmark or anything within any of these plans, uh, any of these relief plans to address this. So the American Rescue Plan provided some dollars for us to start dealing with some behavioral health issues, mental health issues. We know that a lot of the folks that are homeless are suffering from some mental health challenges, behavioral health challenges, su substance uh, use disorders. There's some resources there. And because the plan just became law, it's going to take a little while to get to the communities. But I guarantee you, when it comes to opioids, when it comes to dealing with uh, some of these issues of addiction, we're going to try to provide resources and partner with folks at the local level. And so we're going to provide some help, but it's really the locals putting in that hard work to make it happen. But we want to be there next to them. Thank you, Secretary. Chris, thank you.